So in this video for my uh, essential calculus series, we're going to go into some physical applications, some very basic physical applications of, of derivatives. Now, um, you'll recall that the definition of derivative is just the rate of change of a function. So if you think about it, your position is like a function, and velocity is your rate of change of your position. So velocity is the time derivative of position and acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So, um, let's just go over some examples that involve velocity and how it applies as a derivative of position. So, let's pretend that there is some particle or animal or person or whatever you want that's moving with a velocity given by some function that looks like this. Extend that x-axis out. Um, now, what if you were to ask, or what if you were to be asked, when is the particle moving fastest? So recall that this is velocity, not position. If it was position, the point at which it would be moving fastest would be uh, where it had the most positive slope. I'm going to change this just a tiny bit. Where it had the most positive slope. However, since this already is the derivative, the fastest position, or the fastest movement of the particle is where the velocity is at its highest. So that is going to occur right here, because the velocity is at its highest point. Um, how about when the particle is stopped? Well, what's happening when the particle is stopped? What is your velocity when you're stopped? It's zero. So the particle is stopped right here, right here, and right here. So red is equal to fastest, green is stopped, and what if you want to know when the particle was moving backwards in the animal or whatever we decided it is? Um, that would be whenever the velocity is negative. That's the equivalent of moving backwards. So that's all along this blue line. So everywhere between, I'll call this V1 and V2, the particle is moving backwards. And of course, the forwards would be when it's above the axis, but that's, that's kind of obvious, so I'm not going to write that. Now let's go and look at a, er, a particle's position and then figure out or derive its velocity from there. So let's say the particle's position is, uh, sorry, it's represented by a graph that looks like this. And of course, we only have time. This is a time axis, so it's only the positive values of time that we're worried about. Let's say it looks like this. So this is x of t. And what would v of t look like? And you may have done this in a physics class, but let's take a look here. So here, the graph is positive. So v of t is some positive value. And actually, let me, I'll do that in a different color. It's positive. So we have some positive constant that aligns with that. Here, it's zero. So the, fun the velocity is zero, and that aligns with that. Here it's increasing again, so we have some positive velocity. And we've already done some practice with this, but I just want to reiterate and apply it. So here, once again, we're flat, and now here, we're decreasing. So the velocity is some negative value, and those, of course, are all kind of, they're all part of the same function, so I'm just connecting them. Um, this is how you would turn velocity or position into velocity. Now let's take that velocity graph and turn it into an acceleration graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this and call that acceleration. Sorry, a bit more. Clean that up a bit. So if we consider that to be the acceleration, which is the slope of velocity, you'll look everywhere that velocity graph is flat. So the acceleration is just this. 
acceleration is there is no acceleration so whenever you see a position graph that is either flat or linear you know that it's not accelerating it's either going at a constant speed or it's sitting still so there can't be any acceleration going on because the velocity isn't changing and the uh, the only point that I still want to make is one thing that you might have gone over in your class and just to remind you is speed is different than velocity speed is actually so I'll call that I will call that s of t speed with respect to time is equal to the absolute value of the velocity so basically all that means is that it doesn't matter if you're going 10 meters per second forward or 10 meters per second backwards speed is just 10 meters per second irrelevant of direction so if I wanted to change this graph down here to whoops eraser to s of t all I have to do is take that point where the velocity was negative and make it positive. And now we have speed of t because we have the absolute value of the velocity graph. Um, so that's, I think, all we're going to do about the physical application with uh, position of particles, etc., for now at least. Um, so this was, I don't know which video, like the 8th or ninth or something of my essential calculus series. See you guys.